Good afternoon, Drupal Camp LA 2010. My name is Doug Van, your host for today's session on uh, improving your workflow and development, your development workflow with uh, tools from webenabled.com. I am Doug Van from Indianapolis, Indiana, a long, long, long way away from LA. Check me out at dougvan.com. Lots of cool stuff. I do a lot of blogs. Um, I'm available for Drupal training, individual or corporate, uh, virtual or on site. I'm your man. I can bring in team members to split things up and get jiggy with it in areas that maybe it's not my forte. forte. So it's, that's, that's the commercial for me. But today we're going to talk about webenabled.com. And the question becomes, once I start this, which screen is being captured for the, uh, for the uh, Camtasia? Let's find out. <clears throat> Good, we both get to see it. Sweet, we are truly mirroring. So uh, many of you have been to webenabled.com and checked it out, and um, it must have been intriguing to some degree because we, we filled out the room and people spilling into the aisles and breaking fire code, and it's, it's, it's a good thing. Think about your, your typical development life, life cycle. You may have a, a boilerplate you start from. I mean, you may go to drupal.org and download Drupal, or maybe you get it from uh, Acquia. Um, they, they provided, you know, of course, all the contrib modules, the most popular ones already in their, in their Drupal Aquia core. And they also offered uh, SVN checkout you know, at an early age. So um, if, you're not C if you're not into CBS, you know, there's a lot, a lot of reasons people start with Aquia. But if you want to start with one of these uh, base installs, you know, maybe you do. You grab it from wherever and you instantiate it into a web root of your own box or somewhere else. And um, you set up, your, set up your dev environment. You know, get some SVN going, some SSH going, some S SCP, SRTB, PHMI admin if you want to play around with the GUI when you don't feel like doing command line. Uh, you may have a test environment as well for, for doing some, some scary stuff that might, you don't want to dance over on the dev because you know, if it fails, just delete it. And, you know. So you have, you have a little sandbox test environment. And then eventually you're going to come to a staging point. And a lot of people tend to start sharing it with the client at the stage level. Is that pretty common? They don't, you don't really share the devs a lot of times. Um, maybe screenshots for, for, for a point. And that's cool. And then, then you want to bring team members in. Maybe you've got um, some remote people. Maybe you've got some overseas developers. The demand for Drupal is extremely high right now, and um, it's not going to all happen in the U.S. of A. or other English-speaking uh, countries. Um, consider checking into uh, Renacode or Odesk and places like that and um, you know, leverage the goodness of uh, affordable overseas help. Seriously, it's, it's not a black eye on your shop. It's, it's getting work done. Because if we don't do this stuff, people that are unskilled are going to finally figure out, you know, they can take, take a hack at it. And when I say hack, I mean hack. So get some help and do good work. Bring your team members in. Odesk. And there's more. Rent-A-Coder just changed their name to v, v Worker Because Rent-A-Coder was typically coders. But now you have people link building and doing PMing, I mean, and, and other you know, copywriting and stuff. So they, they, we're not just coders, you know, we're, we're just workers. We're virtual workers. So it's vworker.com, I think. And um, I'm adding five more, and I'm adding five more. You may have large numbers of teams. So getting people involved in your project, you've got to create a, an SSH account for them or give them the root or, you know, you got to, so managing the access to, the, to your team members and getting them involved, you know, it's, it's just more work for you. This is your development life cycle. Backup and restoring, you know, uh, letting other people do it, doing it all yourself. Oops, we didn't do it. I thought we did a backup, or did we not? Uh, I thought he did. And then I'm um, sharing it beyond just your team, sharing it with other people that are stakeholders in the project. And then, uh, so you're finally done. You've done all this, and you've got your product, and you've signed off on it. You've, you've, already, you've went ahead and spent the first half down deposit. You know, it's a, a $20,000 project. They gave you ten grand. you have already spent it. You want that second half of the check coming. It's all ready to go. It's time to deploy. It's a job in and of itself in many in many occasions, in many circumstances. But if they've got a, um, you can you can host it on WebEnabled. You can host it at, on a Pantheon VPS with Memcache, uh, Varnish, all the goodness of, of Drupal Press Flow, and uh, or deploy to Amazon or GoDaddy or Bluehost. Uh, one in one is a big list. So, but um, we're to get into the details of that. So, would we accept this as a, as a typical development cycle life cycle? And, uh, and during Q&A, I'd love to hear uh, deviations from that. So if you're looking for time savings, you'd like to have a tool that might do all of this 
not for you because you never want a tool to do things for you. you I'm a control freak. Who are my control freaks in the house? Okay. Don't do it for me. Do it with me. All right? And um, we're just checking off all these, all these elements here. Yeah, if, if, this, if this is your cycle, Web Enable is your tool. That's the point I'm going to make today. And make sure I'm... Yeah, we're good. So um, three simple steps. Start a site. A couple of you have done this. Um, if you're building something totally new and you don't want a boilerplate install, you've got your own. Okay, you've got your own little rolled little in instance. Um, then in install a blank, you know, a blank web, a web root uh, from group from Web Enabled, or Drupal, or Joomla, or WordPress, Magenta, Civi CRM. Who's never installed Civi CRM? It's a little tricky. Okay, um, but we can do it with one click. And this is not the, the Fantastico one click. This is like a development tool. So it's, you'll, you'll see the point as I develop it. Open Publish, Open Atrium, Titler, uh, Elg. Someone tell me what Elg is at the end of, the, of, the, of this gig. I've, I've seen all this list of apps, and I, what's that? So, and more. Uh, creating a copy and cloning things. The, the ease of cloning and giving somebody a URL to go play. And then if, uh, if it crashes, delete it. That's good stuff there. The second step is building and managing. So SSH, SCPF, TB, PHP, my admin, the backups and restores, uh, subversion repositories, um, managing your teams, and all the good stuff. And selling in the marketplace. Who has not seen the incredible, tremendous growth in productizing Drupal? Okay? Productizing on two levels. Software as a service, and who's that? Who's, who's productizing Drupal as software as a service? Acquia, what's the product? Drupal Gardens, who else? Buzzer, who's doing that? Lullabot's doing Buzzer. So we're productizing Drupal as software as a service, but we're also productizing Drupal, and you buy a profile or a theme, you buy a Drupal theme, and um, you're buying the, the graphics and the creatives, because you can't really buy a configuration. You can ask someone to build you a configuration and pay them when they're done, but you can't have a stock, you know, I got a thumb drive full of, you know, 50 configurations, and they're a buck a pop. You know, can't sell configurations, you can sell themes, right? Who's selling pre-configured themes like that for, for a fee? Top-notch Top themes. Anybody else? CMS Quick Start, and I'll talk about them. You'll see, the, you'll see both Top-notch and CMS Quick Start have seen this wave coming, and they've, they've got their surfboard in the water on this. This is awesome. I only use that analogy on the West Coast. And time for water from my Aquia bottle. <laughs> Showing my lullabot tattoo. No, just kidding. <clears throat> and then it's time to deploy, which is a whole project of its own. Okay, is, is deploy, am, I, am I overshooting this? Is deployment not a pain? Is, if you got something, you're good? You're good? So you can grab your existing also site and stick it in. You can grab your existing sites and stick them to the blank site. Or do you have to say if you have an instance of, say, Drupal 6, 616, six, whatever? Mm -hmm. Can you bring uh, your existing site and uh, put it under that particular you, you can bring an existing site and bring it in and have it be aware of what you've brought in. Okay, if you have a Drupal 6.17 or a 6.16 or whatever you have, and you want to bring it into this environment and manage it with web-enabled tools, you want to create a, a Drupal 6.16 or 6.17 site, then bring in your code and your database. So a uh, web-enabled dashboard says, that's a Drupal 6.17 site. Well, truth be known, it's not the one that it first created. It's the one that you, you kind of came in afterwards. So yeah, take one out and put the other one in. If you do it real like dragging a blanket off the table, whatever. And then, and then if you went ahead and updated the 6.16 to 6.17, what happens? Does it it's all good. As long as you haven't hacked your core and you haven't put things in strange places. Okay. So there's, there's a little bit of standards. Files under 16, all the uh, domains under 6.16? Yes. Okay. Well, yes. You're good there. So then deploying. Deploying can be a pain. I really hope to make the point that, that uh, Web Enabled makes that deployment easy for you. Easier. Never easy. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much easy. Pretty much easy. And um, I was supposed to be doing this as I went through one, two, and three, so I'll just press the air cursor key a couple times. Um, so here's the front page, and they're working on changing this. I, I sent somebody there when I was on a, on a tele con video conference, and I was trying to impress them with all the apps you can install, and it doesn't give you the list of apps until you've created the account. So uh, um, maybe that's even changed by now because these slides are a couple, a couple days old. But um, so it's, it's very clear now. What is web enabled? You know, I, I can go on about what I think it is. But when they market the site on the front page, they say, "Start from scratch," as this gentleman would probably do, or build on top of an existing application in our library. And these guys are on the edge of it. Okay, 
Uh, they had WordPress uh, 3 beta as it was coming out, and every time Drupal Alpha or Drupal 7 Alpha has a new alpha, it's available on here. So, I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're watching us like a hawk. And, um, and Silverstripe and Magenta and everything else, they're keeping on the, on the cutting edge of what's going on. So start from scratch or use an existing application from the library, and then here's a list of what all you have. And what can you do? You can back up from the store and, and all the points I've made in cron jobs, uh, access logs, and uh, custom PHP I&I. And, and this is just for development now. You're not going to, you can point an A record to one of these, you know, sites. It's, it's going to be like some, some username dot dev to dot web enabled dot net. So you, you can point, you know, dev dot client's name to this if you want to. But you wouldn't want to use this for production. This is really, a, it's fast though. It's nice and fast. It Maybe faster than your, you know, your, your shared host production environment. This would be faster in most cases, I bet. So, blah, 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 blah. Here is the dashboard. Who, so, so some of you have seen the dashboard, some of you have not. Who are my people who don't have an account and have never seen the dashboard? Okay. I'll zip through this and then just log into my account. And, uh, you know, the, the, and by the way, I, I, so many minutes into this session, the entire web-enabled dashboard and interface in the whole site is built in. Drupal. Did you, did, those of you that logged in, was that obvious to you? Was it obvious that you were interacting with a Drupal site? Yeah. I mean, I, log in, username, password. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, the user login, which could be could be themed by any other CMS to look like ours. But yeah, it's it's clearly a um, a Drupal site. That's I always <laughs> I always forget to mention that. Um, but uh, here here are um, these these are all the uh, activities you've done you've done recently. You know, it keeps the log on the on the overview and the activity of what all has been going on in your site. So you always know because you've got team members working with you perhaps, and you want to know who's been doing what. And here's a reduced list uh, of, of of the sites you can install, and we're going to go into that more when I show you my install. And then someone's going to tell me what Elg is. Okay, I guess I could hit the uh, view details and find out for myself. Elg is uh, educational based for it. Educational. Educational social network. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Uh, and uh, we even have the Drupal uh, event distribution that was used at Colorado Drupal Camp, which was also used at Chicago Drupal Camp, same weekend. Um, so if you want, if you're putting on a Drupal event, I'm putting on Drupal Camp Indy, October 2nd in Indianapolis. I'm the leader of the local group there. And I just grabbed the install from here and I have a Drupal Camp site. I got to take out, take out the, the things that aren't right and put in my own theme. And, but it's, it's, it's an event registration site with the PayPal integration. I just got to give it, you know, wow, you know, it does, uh, you know, 75, 80% of the work. So, um, you know, give it a site name, put it in a folder. Hit next step, and I'm just going to do this live in a second here. Yeah, we're out, we're done with this. Let's go ahead and do it for real. Dougvan.com for all your training needs. Uh, we've enabled. So um, they keep they log you out very quickly. A very short session life, an unattended session life. Which is good because there's a lot of power in this stuff, so you don't want to walk away from from it and have your cat walk across the screen, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you're at the library or something. I don't know. So it uh, keeps you logged out pretty. It may if I talk too long, it may log us out in the middle of something. So uh, I'm, I'm going to log in. Okay, well signing up. So the trial is free for 30 days. It's renewable. You don't. It doesn't ask you for a credit card up front, and then you forgot about it, and then it hits you 31 days later. It doesn't do that. Um, in fact, the 30-day trial is a little bit of a misnomer. It'll give you a little extra time. You know, they're, they're not really anxious to kick you out the door. What does renewable mean? Renewable means you can, uh, after your 30 days, you can actually, you know. You check the box and say, I want to keep going. I haven't had to do that. I don't know what the uh, user experience is for that. But just know that you're not going to get completely locked out on your 31st day and force you, oh, did you like that? You know, the, the first one's free, little girl. Oh, but I'm going to pay for it now. So that's not nice. So, uh. And there's different plans on how many how many um, applications you want to run at one time, and I I do some this, they're a client of mine I do some uh, some marketing for, if nothing else and uh, queuing queuing of other new interfaces they're working on. I'm working on Basecamp integration which is going to be sweet because that that some of the Basecamp tools are not present in this because it's not supposed to be a Basecamp alternative. This is a unique unique animal that doesn't really have a uh, an apples to apples comparison elsewhere. But I'm going to log in. This is all Drupal. This is very clearly a Drupal site. 
And my password is all stars, so please don't just go put all stars and get into my pass my account. I just need to change that. And you can see all the apps I have here. This would cost 100 bucks a month, but um, I, I, I've been working on helping get Open Scholar installed on there and doing some work with them. So I have the uh, robust account. But um, so let's just start from the top. The the PowerPoint said, "Go to start new site." And Drupal 6.17 with Drush 3. Drush 3 is automatically installed in your environment. And uh, who are my Drush users now? Yeah. Who's, uh, who's kind of curious about it, but maybe installing it sounds like a PITA? Not, not that you're idiots or incapable of doing it, but honestly, I've never done it. Um, I've been in environments where a team member already had it set up, so I've just never had to. I know I, I know I could if I needed to. And then now I've been using this for many months, and again, I don't need to install it. So I get Drush 3 out of the box on every dev environment. A new client says, hey, I want a site. I instantiate this. I've got Drush 3. i got SVN. i got it all set up. And I'm smoking. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a selling point that I never, ever think of until I see it in parentheses on this page. Um, maybe the front page was selling it, and I was looking and talking at the same time. But there's so much goodness in here. I, we, have a, we have a lot of discussions, me and, and, and Salim, the, the owner and developer, uh, the grand poobah of webstandard.com. You know, because you can't just put, you know, a thousand words on your front page. And, you know, some, you got to say the important things. But uh, if Drush 3 is not promoted heavily, it should be. So we have, Drush, or have Drupal 6.17, which is new. Uh, Drupal 7 Alpha 6, but we're also with Drush 3. Anybody installed Drush on Drupal 7 yet? Within three clicks, you can do it here. Uh, Acquia, the standard Acquia, uh, 1.2.26. Here's your empty app. So if you want to bring in just something totally custom, I don't know, PHP BB, that's not one of the options. If you want to bring it in here, um, feel free. Who's familiar with the Fusion Magazine and Skinner? Okay, I recommend highly that the first thing you install, or if you've already installed something, the next thing you install is the Fusion, Mag Fusion Magazine and Skinner. And who knows who, uh, who we thank for this, this top-notch themes. Steph, uh, Steph's session yesterday was awesome. Uh, when I get a new client, I come to Web Enabled. I've already told you that. The next thing I do is I instantiate this app right here. And uh, Hans Riemenschneider from Chicago, an awesome themer, is my go-to guy. I'm always afraid someday he's going to get like a really good gig or a lot of work, and I'm going to call him up. He's going to be like, oh, dude, yeah, I wish I could. I'm just too busy. But for now, I got him, right? So he's awesome. He just does quality work. And I give him this, and um, if I'm not mistaken, I introduced him to this, this theme. You know, I, I like Zen. Who started with Zen? Yeah. I like that in the old days. I call that the old days. Um, but what Stephanie and Chris and Top Notch Themes have done with this, and uh, with help from Gravitech Labs out of uh, Denver, um, it's amazing. So watch her session. But I instantiate this. Is there a question here? Okay. Um, so that's where I go. That's where I start my new sites. Um, and uh, WordPress 3.0, which as soon as the beta went to re uh, released, it was uh, it was up and available. Aquia Slate demo site. It's Aquia with a lot more content. I believe uh, I believe Top Notch may have been involved in that too. Don't quote me. And uh, huh? The slate, the slate theme. And I come from Joomla community. I was on I was on a huge overfunded, underthought-out project. Those are fun. And it was on it was on uh, ASP. And I and I said you got to go to open source. You got to go. And you got to go. If you're gonna do open source, you got to do Joomla. This is 2007. And um, long story short, this is my eighth Drupal camp this year. I got five more this year. Um, and you can break it down a little bit more over here. There's some more Drupal options. Um, I, I had heard of some of these, but not all of them, and, and certainly not played with them, not at all. Um, so the 617 is still there, the 7 Alpha 6, Acquia, Drupal Fusion Magazine, which is my go-to place, Open Atrium is fun, Open Publish I hadn't played with until I got into Web Enabled, um, Pressflow, which um, is just going to be, you know, I think it even pops up with the Garland theme, so it looks, like, it looks and feels like Drupal, and it should. It shouldn't change the UI, it just changes the scalability of it. Pressflow Merc Mercury, the reason we have this I, um, I had to deploy to a client who uh, was paying for advertising and had a lot of, you know, it was, it was a whole put up the Google ads and make a lot of money kind of a project for the client. Um, for me, it was turn around the site amazingly fast with this tool and make a lot of money. But um, I was looking into his scalability needs, and I said, you know what? You know, press flows are given because, I mean, really, I mean, 
you should run your personal blog some press flow. I don't know. I just, it's just, you know, Google, okay, all things being equal between site X and site B, site X is a little faster. It gets ranked better. Speed matters. So we should all be using press flow. But the, the Mercury um, is a distribution. Go, go to Pantheon.com or get Mercury.com, whatever it is. Get Pantheon. Um, it's an image. It's a, uh, for lack of a better phrasing, it's an image. Just pop into a VPS. And I think a 512 will do. And it has all the goodness already installed. You can, you can deploy to that now from here. You've got you to gotta buy a hosting package from what I've enabled. And then they can push it into that environment. Um, managing news, that's Drupal. Yeah, this whole everything's Drupal here. Um, Drupal conference organizing, that's what I use for DrupalCampND.org, which is still in, in development. Tattler, what's Tattler? Nobody? Yeah, I'm just there. It's. it's, it's um, it came out uh, end of last summer and it was supposed to upload. Oh, yeah. So it's in Release Candidate 1 and it's uh, an aggregation, uh, blah, blah, blah. So that's cool. And then um, event registration is something else. I don't know what that is. Is that actually a Drupal app? No, hold on. I got off the list of Drupal stuff, didn't I? Is it really? Proof point? Wow, I mean, I can't keep track of all this, but uh, so there's some other other ones. Um, landing page sales for us. And then you can sell themes through this as well. Uh, CMSQuickstart.com, which is another client of mine. Um, I don't, I didn't develop any of these themes. You want, you don't want me keep me away from your template files, <laughs> except for template.php. When I can write a bunch of code and not have to put classes, I'm good. So CMSQuickstart.com, we started off with the uh, the grunge theme over here. We brought it up and then tested the waters on how that worked and did it all. And then uh, CMS Quick Start said, okay, we'll go ahead and put them all in there. And as soon as we got done with this, they've launched like six or eight more themes. So CMSQuickStart.com is where you go to find uh, live demos and a list of all their themes. And uh, they're, they're highly pre-configured themes. I mean, it's nuts. View slideshows, quick tabs. Uh, recent published content, uh, most visited content, kind of popular content. You can turn off what you don't need, but um, for that um, for that site guy that was doing a site to attract traffic and get ads, um, I took uh, I had him go to the site and pick one of the themes he liked. He bought the theme, paid for the license, and then I instantiated it. I had to bring it over the the not I couldn't do it automatically from here. It wasn't available at the time. It is now, and um, and I just turned off. He didn't want polls. Click. You know, take out the Laura Mipson. It's not even Laura Mipson. I don't know. I think it's some dummy text. And, you know, design through online. It didn't take a lot of time. It didn't take a lot of time. Because the design was done. He pretty much kept it custom. I put his logo up. Um, and then there's also some top notch in here. Um, is there a top notch for sale in here? There's not, is there? I believe that uh, they're they're looking into that. You know, I mean, you, you can buy it from Top Notch. You can buy the you can buy CMS Quick Start from top, from CMS Quick Start as well. Oh, and for three hundred and fifty bucks, uh, if they haven't changed the price, needs to get the horrendous prices, prices. You can have all those themes, all of them, right? And you can just you know go out and launch two clients each. He's like he has like eighteen themes now. So go 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 launch thirty six clients at a couple grand each. You know, does anybody want to make say five hundred grand in their first year in Drupal? We didn't have this three years ago. Okay, I'm using these as base themes. When, when these are appropriate to use, I use them as base themes. When it's more of a you know open-ended project um, with a lot of you know, a lot of requirements, then I go for my um, Fusion magazine, and, I, and that's, that's my base theme. So let's create let's create a Fusion magazine right now. It seems yeah, it, um, it, it's, it's not configured at Web Enabled yet because in Web Enabled it's a la carte. You can buy one, two, three, and four of them. But as soon as you buy two of these, you've paid, you know, the price. You can go to CMSQuickStart.com and pay 350 bucks. Okay. And, and and if they add five more themes before the end of the year, they're available to you. Next year, when they update things for IE9 or FF4 or whatever, or someone discovers a bug about some kind of layout issue, or they or they're, they're getting more mobile friendly and they put some more mobile CSS, you keep on getting all those updates. This is shop in a box. We didn't have this three years ago. If I wasn't spending all my time training and documentation and blogging and making videos, I would do more site development and just kind of resell these, you know? It's very nice. And do read the license. You can't resell in the literal sense. You can't buy off 18 and then open up your little store where people buy these apps. 
you can you can custom the app and develop for this client, that client, and the other client. So read the license, but even then you're fine. It'll be just fine. So if I can find Fusion, here it is. Select this app to install. Site name uh, DCLA, because that's where I am. And uh, in the dev box, I've got a dev box folder there where I put some. I got an Open Scholar folder where I put all my Open Scholar I'm playing with. And sandbox is just a sandbox. And I can create a new folder. I can call it my camp folder. And every time I go to a camp, I have like five more to go to. I could just keep on instantiating amps inside that folder right now. I'll use the sandbox for now. Doesn't make a difference. Next step. And it tells me over here what I selected, lest I lest I be confused. So next step. Uh, and then it's taking some 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 information I have in my cookies or session somewhere. Uh, the shell name is going to be DCLA. You get shell access with this automatically, of course. The app name, uh, the app admin, uh, it'll give you a randomly generated app admin for the application. So when this Drupal site installs, it's admin and a password. I'm creating my own password, not letting it have a default password. Who wants random letters and characters? And the server I'm deploying to is my is my is my shared hosting development environment. If I wanted to launch this on one of my VPSs that I actually have associated with this, I could launch it over there. And as you have different deployment environments in the future, you can, you can launch it to your GoDaddy. You can launch it to your one and one I'm sorry, correction on that. This is not deploying. This is the servers that you have inside your web-enabled account. I have a virtual, I have a VPS inside of web-enabled. You cannot deploy outside of web-enabled. Make that perfectly clear. So, um, so this is all my information. Am I, am I good? It's, it's going to be in my sandbox is where I'm going to put it. It's DCLA. That's my application. And uh, I can view the password. 123456. Okay, I'll never forget that one. Let's hide it again. Create my site. Create my new site. Your new site has been created. The first development environment is in the process of getting built. You will receive an email once it's complete. So all your information and credentials you just created a fusion thing for the first time. Mm -hmm. Does not have any what? It said does not have a what? Your test accounts can only have two applications, and then my account has unlimited. How to delete one? Uh, manage it, and then um, in the uh, center gray area, they're kind of off to the left. -ish. I'll show you. I'll delete one of my old ones. So I'm waiting for this one to get built. I'm going to go over to my um, back to my dashboard. Actually, if I just refresh this page, it's still in process of being built. Because it does a lot. We're setting up SVN repositories. We're setting up uh, Drush 3. We're doing a lot of work here. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard and delete one of my accounts. Um, the Three Stooge account. I doubt very seriously I'm doing anything worthwhile with a Three Stooge account. Um, and um, the goal here is to delete this account. And we just recently changed, they just recently changed the, the, the UI. Do there's disable? That that, that sounds uh, pretty good. Nothing else below it. Let me try disable. Disabling the environment blocks SSH shell and web services or web access. It does not delete the environment. You may re-enable it at any time. We'll cancel that. So settings top right. Settings top right. Site settings sounds good. Invisible tabs. Drupal six suffers from. Oh, I didn't see that tab. In Drupal 7, we're fixing that. So um, so I can, I can change the name of it, and I can change the location of it. Delete entire site. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, my co-presenter. It's, it's, it's a community effort. Okay, I'm more of a presentation framework. I, I interaction from other developers to really get the final product. So I'm deleting the Three Stooge. I have no idea what that was. And you in the back, did you get that? It was uh, when I had one of my, when I was in the scope of one of my sites, there was a site setting. Like if I go over here to my, 
Colorado Camp. When you're on, when you're in the scope of one specific site, so this is all about the Colorado Camp Dev Box. Over here is Site Settings, and uh, inside that tab, which doesn't even look like a tab, so a little bit of UI fail. Yeah, so lots of bells and whistles and knobs and switches and dials and blinking things, and um, all of a sudden you can't see a tab anymore. So unless you're this guy over here. So that's so that's that's the cool part. Now let me get back to my um, dashboard and take a look at my application. Um, good deal. Yeah. Um, it's going to be called, let's see, it's in my sandbox, it's called uh, DCLA. So, add a new person. I can add a person who already has a web-enabled account, or I can add in someone's email address who doesn't have an email account. They get notification, they can come in and join and collaborate. And uh, there's a lot to do with that, and I encourage you to go check it out. Just you know, use one of your other email addresses and invite yourself, and and find out just kind of how the permissions work. Um, and um, you can also do um, uh, public keys, and, you know, as, as opposed to giving them an SSH username and password. You can anybody anybody play with that and dance with that? Yeah, a little bit, a little complicated perhaps, but it's a little bit easier in this setting. Uh, setting up SVN repositories, if you know what you're doing, is not so hard, but doing it here is, is much easier. And I've got 17 minutes, right? Okay, 17 minutes. Um, what would be good to show off? Um, this is the activity uh, section, so back in the overview section is where I get back to my controls. Or do I? Yeah. Yes? Um, so you, you use this for, for development and then how, what's your workflow for sending it to a production site? Because you mm -hmm. say you don't want to use this for production, so what's your workflow for sending it to production? Um, to do, it, there's a settings in your account where you set up um, some, some GoDaddy, some one in ones some, some Amazon or some uh, Rackspace or whatever the allowable deployable places are. And it uses those credentials. Then you go to your site and then deploy. And then you pick one of those destinations. Okay. And then, of course, you got to go over there and instantiate the account and stuff and get the credentials off of it. And then, um, then just push it. Uh, Aqua hosting is one, is one as well. So, so if if they've got if they've got some you know Billy Bob's hosting, the chances are good that it's never going to it's going to be a long time before this webnet can push to Billy Bob's hosting. So it, this will actually push out a whole uh, like a whole virtual server mm -hmm. to Rackspace. Mm -hmm. okay. And if it's and if it's if it's if it's got a Rackspace VPS that's that's prepared for a Pantheon, uh, you know distro. With all your stuff, then it'll just put it right in there, including the uh, solar search okay, pre-configured. So you, won't, you won't do the whole. It, this isn't like a Ubuntu configuration. It'll push a whole VPS. It will. And on a very high level, the whole like an image. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And or on a simpler level, it'll just push the file structure in the database to a cPanel account somewhere. I think I think Bluehost is on there. Their, their cPanel. Okay. And there and um, so you can just push the, the file structure in the database because there are no server you know environment. Where where is it? I don't know, but I do know this. The reason I can't find what I'm looking for right now is because you got to click this thing right here. It says, I've got the information saved. Show me my daggone environment so I can manage it, uh, the environment management pane. So you typically want to view this password, view that password, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to broadcast my RSS page. And then, um, then copy all this and put it in an email or in a text file somewhere. Now I did get an email about this stuff because I'm logged in. Slides and bugs. Here's the email that I got. It's web enabled. An environment has been configured for you to access the environment using the following URL. Blah. You can also manage the environment via your web enabled dashboard. Blah. So I you know, it keeps track of what I got going on. So now I click this to get out of this little loop I'm stuck in. Now here's my management pane, okay? And I can go to site settings and delete it right now. I can change the name of it right now. Um, this is a really fun trick. Here's 14 minutes worth of fun. Let's go to uh, draw. Okay, and here's clone. Hit, okay, hit a clone. Right now this is dcla.dev2.webenabled.net. If uh, and, and we've been developing this site for a couple of days, and then, I'm, uh, then one guy said, you know what? There's just no way around it but to do panels for this thing, right? These these pages right here, panels is what you want to do. And then we're all doing other things, you know, with other 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 models and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Run with it. Clone the site, dance with your panels, and do everything else. And then he'll be like, uh, 
oh man, I totally food barred this. You know, delete it and clone it again. Delete it, and clone it again. And once he's really, really, you know, got it, got it, got it good, then just you know, if we haven't done much over here, we'll just clone his and bring it back, right? We're all they are working on pushing the um, changes from clones. At the very least, you know, S SVN um, moving moving the code around, um, and then using features and uh, other other Drush features, Drush uh, functionality to run differentials in the database and stuff. So they are working very feverishly hard at making this way cooler than it even is now. So that's pretty cool. Now the Drush, okay, this is the Drupal 6 uh, Fusion Magazine install, right? Here's my Drush. Here's so here's uh, here's all my information about the website, and let's look at let's look at modules. And um, these are all. This is uh, this is my you know this is a little a little aggerish at this point, a little aggerish. And this, this is all that's going on. And uh, I know right now that I'm I'm gonna want the Twitter module on this website. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna install the Twitter module on my site. I just installed the Twitter module on my Drupal six site with my web enabled dashboard. And what are these top what are these browse the top hundred modules? What's that all about? Uh, oh I want that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. And then just you know save it and click it. So that's pretty cool. Drush is fun. And I have a Drush 3 environment so I can go to my, my SSH and just Drush clear cache and you know what? So if you call practice to always add modules to I keep forgetting that because I'm, I'm, I'm on this client's project and I've got the the, the ugly email and, and they're, they're 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 trying to scope creep the scope and I'm pissed off and, and uh, my my guy is not on IRC that's what I'm working with so it's all on me right now to fix this and I've totally forgotten that I have a web enabled environment and uh, I need I need a module and I've got a shell terminal open I go to d dot o save the link and the buffer and do a w get I could have done drush but I forgot I had drush three also installed you know so you can you can drush it. You can w get it and tar it, and then go to the GUI and enable it. You can go here. <laughs> you can do it any way you like. I mean, I tend to take the long way sometimes. So if you, if you went ahead and then put it, uh, did it show, show mm -hmm. it? It's very intuitive. Uh, I do sites all modules contrib, sites all modules custom. Who's with me? I break my custom and my contrib modules up. And uh, it's just it's easier that way. It really is. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a heavy tabber on the SSA, on the command line, and the more modules you have in your folder, the more you got to get more characters. I'm that lazy. I don't want to compete with all the letters and the module names in the contrib. That's the same thing for you. Some of you SSA users are like, yeah. Um, I've got 10 minutes, and uh, the, the questions have been awesome. SVM. SVM? I have not had to use it yet. I'm a one-man shop, and I've, and I've had small enough projects but I haven't had to do it. It's there, it works, and if you find out before we leave today, tell me what you think. So, so uh, you can just dump your stuff into the SVM that they, they'll set up, right? Mm -hmm. then, then you started the whole package. Mm -hmm. so anything you can put in the SVM. And you can go to your local host. on your. I have, we all have local hosts. And you, you can check it out and play with it, check it in, and, and you're, you know, the, the, Web enabled already knows what you're doing because you're doing stuff. You've uh, you've checked in modules that weren't uh, that weren't there originally. You've updated modules, and um, so you're just. And it will show up here. So, mm -hmm. so you can use the SVN as a go between this to your local host. Yeah, machine. yeah. Because I mean, who, who loves to develop locally? You know, I do. You can still do that here, and you still have the power of these tools and cloning and everything else. And then once you, I guess that's that would be a good way to just back up it. It could be. Of course, there's backup tools all over the place, so you can set them up automatically, or just say, "I want to, I want to backup right now," or set it up on a cron, cron tab, cron job. Um, so, and, and the hosting part, you're using them to host your your sites. I have that one client who needed uh, Pantheon. In my estimation, I, I I sold them Pantheon. I think they needed it. Um, and rather than having that go into you know Linode, which is a great place to get uh, Pantheon Li Node. Um, or could have gone to uh, Amazon. Or anywhere. I can you put it anywhere you want. Um, I wanted to put it here because you know I really support Web Enable. I really like the tool, and uh, I thought Let, let's do it. Let's have our first Pantheon deployment. Let's do it. You had a question. You raised your hand. Oh, um, oh um, I'm 
kind of need to avoid the conversion control. So is, is the data flow or is the flow of the development, do you upload to the SDM first and then your files to the site? Or do you put to the site first and then update the SDM? The workflow is you create the application and then using the SVM controls, which I have yet to do, um, it creates the repository and then fills up the repository with all your code. And then um, if you wanted to check it out into your check it in, check it out, check it out. If you wanted to check it out on your local machine, then just um, you know, use, use the credentials and the, and the information that the URL gives you. And then it just dumps the whole web route into your local host. And then as you make changes, um, check it in. It, does the check-in automatically update the code on your server, or do you have to go to then back to your server and say, check it out, or, you know, your, your dev environment is on web enabled? It doesn't automatically update that. That's not your, like, your... My goal right? is to make an optional update hook on that, so that every time, if you want, every time you check code into the repo, the update hook says, okay, you've been updated, here's the hook, automatically update the uh, dev environment. I'm going to say that by default, so I haven't done this, by default, that's probably not what you want. Right. It'd be quite shocking. Yeah. Um, especially if it's a stage server and it's the client's watching. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm not working with you this anymore. Is great because that, that could be your staging. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the back. Um, I like this interface and everything, but what if you already have um, existing projects that you'd be able to integrate to this using SDNs or um, your local files? There are probably some interesting ways you could do that, um, and and just use I mean use nothing but the SVN fe features on this and the cloning I guess. Um, although although cloning and such, it has to know what you're are you cloning a Drupal site, are you cloning a Joomla site, are you cloning a WordPress. So at some point, Web Enabled really needs to know what your project is. And then as I answered the earlier question, if you have your own Drupal six or seven or five um, project right now, you create a Drupal six project and then slip your code in. And, and write and clean, clean the database, use the same database name, and then uh, import your data into it. So when you step back, as far as WebEnable is concerned, that's the site they built. So then the, the tools work. Um, otherwise, it, it doesn't know what your tools are. So if you want the tools, all the tools, fool it into thinking it was its, it, was, it belongs to it, to WebEnable. But if you still use it for version control on a custom proprietary PHP app, you can do that too. Hmm. Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. The question is, if you had existing uh, staging servers, could you somehow integrate this? And I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they'd be opposed to it. I mean, they're not, you know, Nazi, and you have to be inside my environment. Well, if you want to pay for an account and use bandwidth elsewhere, bring it on. <laughs> Over here. Yeah, yeah. There's a session. Is it over with? Did we miss it yet? Yeah, it was yesterday. The Cristofano. Um, yeah, that's that. You know, that's that's the big uh, objection to using a, a, a dynamic database-driven CMS is I can I can update my code all day long. Now features let you put a lot of your configuration in code. You can export views and export CCK content types and put them in code, which was the predecessor to doing it the features way. Um, taxonomy, but you can't put taxonomy in code. I still don't think they've found a solution for that. Maybe they have, and I haven't kept up with it. Um, so there's there are some hairy hairy issues you run into, but uh, we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. If you have an app that you that is awesome and a theme that you like, and you've you've done this really cool thing, you've kind of made a vanilla white label thing, and you want to sell it for fifty bucks an install, um, put submit it to the marketplace, build it here, make it trick, make sure all your licenses are good. You know, you don't have any stock photos that you're not licensed for, for, you know, iStock or whatever. So make sure you're all good and legal and put it in the marketplace. Something else you can do, you can create a shared URL of your project and you can give somebody that URL. And when they're logged into their web-enabled account and they go to that URL, it creates an instance of your site under their account. And they're divorced. They don't share back and forth. They're not repository. They're not, nothing, they're, they're not, it's not related at all. You're just totally giving them the exact same app through a URL. And you can say this URL works once, and, and then you can turn off that URL and no one else can go instantiating your, your application on their site. That's a pretty cool sharing feature. That's pretty cool. You know, if, if I was working on open something, open, open Doug Van, you know, some new awesome distribution, and I wanted to give you guys, you know, some room to play with it, I'd create a shared URL after building it, and all of you set up a web-enabled account, go to that URL, and it just builds it, the whole environment in your site. 
you guys can play with it. You know? Wow. So, so this, this is fruitful stuff, good stuff. In the back? You know, I'm a Skinner fan, you know, and I love everybody. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all over the place up here. Um, I don't know that they will. Okay, I'll tell you what. Um, kind of their target market, and here are these uh, trifold pamphlets you can have up here. There's also some uh, in the uh, sponsor lounge upstairs. But um, they're targeting people, you know, your, your turn, the turnkey solution to your next Drupal project. And uh, there's not a lot of admin goodness on those ends. You kind of get the, the raw Drupal admin on those, but they're doggone beautiful looking, and you take out your lower MIPS and put in your, your actual text, and you can launch a brochure site quicker than you can imagine. So I don't think the usability, you and I like Skinner and, and, and all that goodness, I, I don't think that's the target. But they would be well to answer that question differently as soon as possible. It's no, I'm not. I don't recall that they do. Now, the last six or eight uh, themes they've released, I haven't looked at yet, but I just don't think it's in their workflow. But those are things they can add. So if you buy the whole package or buy one, that could be added, you know, before the, before the month's over, if they chose to do so. And on your next update, and there's and, and they, we've established automatic updates on here. Hey, your um, your CMS grunge theme has an update. Do you want to accept it? Very nice. No, no. The PHP template engine is uh, ubiquitous across all these conversations. Um, Skinner is just a, a, putting your theming control in the GUI. Putting more and more, I mean, just, you know, they're even working on creating a, a text editor to create extra CSS files on the fly. So there's all these, it's, it's a class library of floating and margining and guttering and all these columns and 960 grid. And you just keep on dynamically assigning classes to things from a drop down. And you're doing all these sweeping layout changes, fluid or fixed. And it's like, wow, are you a themer? No, I don't have to be. I have the Skinner module. Rock on with that. And if you want to play with Skinner module in the setup and you never have before, go to webenabled.com, install the Fusion theme, and play. I mean, you, you will never go to sleep again. You'll never eat again. You can just play with Open Atrium, Open Publish. I mean, just for goofing off, this thing rocks, let alone the productivity uh, gains I've got out of it. Um, this is the only way I, only way I do things now. You know, they, they maintain the servers. I, I build sites and collect checks. How does it uh, uh, manage uh, different versions of the modules so you can have an older version of the module if you want to keep? How does it do it? Do it, it doesn't do show <coughs> not, not installed, or what does it do? You definitely want to do individual you know, onesies, twosies. You know, check, 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 update these. Um, as opposed to drush update of the whole thing. And you know, and, and I've I've seen that. Has anybody ever updated a module and the one the only one little aspect that you use of it was changed and you had to roll back? I won't call that module out right now, but to this day I cannot use the current live version. I have to go back one one level. Because the one thing I do with it, I think it's broke. <laughs> I should file I should file a I should file a patch. But yeah, you're right. Uh, keep control. Never do the sweeping changes like that. No, I know. What, what, uh, my question is, how does it show you? Does it show you not installed? Um, or does it say enabled version whatever? Well, this is a fresh install. It's been updated recently, so everything's updated. Um, so I really don't know. Okay. I'm sorry I don't have a good answer for that. And you can change your themes. You can, you can download new themes as well. Yeah, it has a bunch of things in it, right? It does. So it It will. It's just goodness, and I, I teach this. This is my first time having a class of of, of you know high brown ninjas. Cause I know you're all just amazing Drupalers. Uh, I, I do. I use this for all my noob classes. Okay, class. Today we're going to talk about you know what's a node, and I I give them all their own you know sandbox, and uh, I just uh, they all follow along with me, and these I can keep them up here forever, so they can have their sandbox you know three months later, and uh, and they're pretty they're pretty uh pretty tickled by this stuff. But uh, I'm, I'm really loving the reaction I'm getting from uh, you know some of you hardcore uh, ninjas because I've been in love with this thing forever and I've been like oh I just want to show somebody you know and uh, it is and again you know go go clone it go clone it and update your core you know don't trust don't trust anything 
And so instead of backing up, I create clones every so often. Just, oh, here's my Monday clone, you know. And then if I do something and I change something, well, what, what was that view field configuration last month? I'll go back to my other clone and take a look at that field. I'm like, that configuration, and I'll come back, you know. So, I don't know. You can just play, you can just play around all day. Do you have a question? Okay, good. Well, thank you so much, my wonderful class. That's webenable.com. I am Doug Van. Check me out, dougvan.com. My business cards are up here. I'm available for training and development. Thank you so much.